you are an entrepreneur in California and you would like to run business in California, how to open a C Corp in California yourself? It is expensive sometimes to hire a lawyer and the process shouldn't be that difficult. Here today, we're gonna show you the entire process, how to register C Corp in California. And uh, you will have the step-by-step -step process so you can do it yourself. And bear in mind, this is not a legal advice. And today, uh, to do this entire thing, uh, I have Tigran Karatunyan, US tax advisor. Hi, Tigran, great to have you with us. Let's get started. Daniel, yeah, thank you for having me too. So uh, we are going to start from um, going uh, general overview. I'm gonna share my presentation. So obviously there are many advantages um, when you open a corporation or set up an LLC in California. California has a GDP larger than France or United Kingdom, has access to Silicon Valley, has access to um, a huge market. And um, even if you're a corporation that's not based in California, but you're selling your stuff in, in different places, generally you're required to register if your sales in California exceed $100,000. And chances of that are very high given that California has a population of roughly 40 million people with a very high buying power. So let's go over a um, couple of key steps. So um, to set up a corporation, and it's very similar for LLC too, you have to go through um, generally five or six steps. Uh, bear in mind, these are the bare minimum, right? So uh, there may be other requirements too, but first and foremost, you have to file articles of incorporation, right? This is a form that defines the bare minimum constitution of your company. And this is filed online. We'll show you how to do it. Um, and once it's filed, uh, the state will either approve or decline your corporation. And as, long, as soon as it's approved, your company is up and running. Now you will need to have a registered agent. Registered agent is someone who accepts service of process for your business. So let me explain what this is. And we've done this during previous videos. So if someone wants to file a complaint against your business or the government wants to reach out to your business, this address must be publicly available. So even though you're allowed to use your own home address if you're based in California, it's not always a good idea because it needs to be open for business during reasonable hours. So if someone, let's say on Monday at uh, 2 p.m., which is a reasonable business hour, decides to come to your home and give you a service process, give you a complaint against your business, you need to open the door and you need to accept that. So you can't say, this is my private residence. I'm not accepting it. Uh, you may just default on, on a complaint, right? So registered agent has to be open during reasonable hours. That's why sometimes many people, even if you have a residence in California, choose to hire someone to serve as their registered agent. They're very cheap. They cost roughly between $50 and $100. Uh, you, if you Google, there are plenty of options and you choose the cheapest one, right? That's always, that's always been the advice we've given to people. Now, step number three, this is not required, but it's highly encouraged to have internal regulations, right? So this could be the corporate bylaws. They could, this could be the stock certificates. This could be issuing stock, appointing board of directors and officers and other internal rules. Now, why do you need this? If it's just a single owned corporation where you, you're in charge of everything, uh, you won't really feel the need. However, more you grow, more complex your management structure becomes, uh, more this comes hand, making sure no one just takes over your business, no one uh, tries to take advantage that your business is not protected by this kind of stuff. Um, so the best idea is to start your internal regulation to complete at least some of your internal regulations when you start the business and you're in full control. Now, after, after that, or even before that, uh, you can obtain the EIN number. Uh, EIN number is obtained by the IRS. Um, this is used for IRS to track your company. Basically, instead of 
IRS having to go by look you up by your name. They just look you by your number and EIN number allows you to file your corporate tax returns and allows you to make tax payments, right? Also, most banks will, will require an EIN number to open an account for you. Um, it serves as an identifier for building your business credit if you're looking to borrow money in the future. So um, this is something, even though technically it's not required um, in practice, you have to get it. You have no other choice. Um, then um, you will most likely need to open a bank and merchant accounts. Um, bank, a bank account allows you to uh, make accept pay, accept deposits, uh, make payments, um, link a debit card to it, possibly get a credit card. Merchant account allows you to accept credit card payments and also ACH payments sometimes. And obviously, um, in a modern day, very few businesses operate on cash. You need to have this too. And then the last step is, and this is very extensive, so we can't cover the last step. However, many businesses have requirements to obtain licenses. Now, um, why is this extensive? Because the licensing process for an ice cream shop is completely different from licensing process for a um, tracking company, which is different from a dental clinic, right? Ice cream shop will most likely need to get a seller's permit, will most likely need to register to collect sales tax, will most likely be required to get a food um, certification, right? So, and other stuff. Tracking company probably needs to get um, hazard insurance, liability insurance. So again, this is very complex, the last step. Um, and this will require a consultation. But um, for simple stuff, like if you're a software developer, this is practically a risk-free business, you generally don't need to obtain a license, right? So, uh, but again, uh, last step requires consultation, right? So it's impossible to cover in, in a video. It's probably impossible to cover in, in a book. So um, there we go. So now let's go over the fees California charges its car corporations. I'm going to remove uh, move this to the side. So, um, since we're talking about C corporations, it's hundred dollars to file. Um, there is no franchise tax for C corporations, even though there is an annual report requirement every two years, uh, which is twenty five dollars. There is a state corporate income tax, which is one of the highest in the nation. Um, I think only second to New Jersey, or correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it's definitely one of the highest. It's eight point eighty four, and the minimum uh, corporate income tax is eight hundred dollars. So even if you had zero um, dollars in net profit, even if you had no transactions, you still have to pay $800 a year to keep your um, company up and running. There is no revenue tax on corporations, um, which is good. Uh, and the return and the payment is due on April 15. If you're an S corporation, um, the filing is the same $100 because you're filing the same documentation. There's no franchise tax either. There's 1.5% state income tax with a minimum of $800 again, no revenue tax, and your tax return is due on March 15 along with the payment. Uh, let's also cover the LLC because um, some people also may choose to have an LLC instead of a corporation. So it's $70 to file. Franchise tax is $800. Uh, now, typically due on April 15, however, your first year's payment is due on day 15 of four months. So for example, um, let's say, um, you filed an LLC, you set up an LLC on June 1st, your four months from June 1st will be um, June, July, August, September. So September, it will be your month's four. So your first payment of $800 will be due on September 15. After that, your second payment will be due on March 15. So if you're setting up an LLC, let's say in December, or um, let's say in, in, in um, September, not a great idea because um, then you'll be paying eight hundred dollars twice, um, you know, with a disparity of just one month, right, or something. So be mindful of that. That there is this double franchise tax from LLC. LLCs don't pay state income tax uh, because LLCs income is passed on to, to its owners or members directly. However, LLCs, and this is very important. This is many business owners don't know this. They have a revenue tax from nine hundred to $11,790 and revenue tax sucks because um, 
you literally can, cannot do anything, right? So you, you cannot deduct it. It's basically taxed on your sales. So it begins $900 if your sales exceed $250,000 and it goes up to $11,790. Uh, I believe if your sales exceed $5 million or um, something like that. And your um, if your LLC is a partnership, you are required to file a um, tax return uh, meaning if your LLC has more than one members, right? So by either March 15 or April, April 15 depends, right? Um, so um, this is all you need to know before you can start the registration. So now let's go to um, the California Secretary of State's website. I just wanted to show you an example how your business will show up here. So let's take a small company named Apple Inc. You might have heard of them. Uh, so it says when it was filed, it was filed on January 3rd, 1977. It's in an active status. Um, it's in good standing. It was formed in California. It's a stock corporation. Now it's principal address. This is where its main office is. Um, it's one Apple Parkway in Cupertino. Its mailing address is one Apple Parkway in Cupertino too. Now, if you mail them something here, they don't have to respond. They don't have to accept it. Uh, here it says that your statement of information is due um, on January 31st, 2024. Now, here is their uh, registered agent. Now, this address, 330 North Brent Boulevard, Glendale, California, and any of the people mentioned here, Amanda Garcia, Gabriela Sanchez, and this is public information, so we're not exposing anyone's private life. Um, so these are people who will accept service of process. So if you want to file a lawsuit against Apple, instead of sending to their mailing address or instead of going to their principal address, you send it address to one of these people and they have to accept it. So this is what registered agent is. Also, Apple has their publicly traded disclosure available. Well, uh, unless you're a public company, you won't have it here. Now let's jump on to the registration process itself. So. You don't want to file a uh, file lawsuit against Apple anyway. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> I mean, if someone wants to. <laughs> All right. So, so the website is bizfileonline.sos.ca.gov. You um, will have to register. After you registered, you'll go to register a business corporation or LLC or a part limited partnership. Don't confuse limited partnership with general partnership. Uh, just saying. So um, here it's asking us, are we forming limited liability company, right? We're not for the sake of this video. Now uh, we're forming a stock corporation. Now articles of incorporation, if you probably remember from the video, it says there's a hundred dollar online processing fee filing online. Now, this is just a uh, privacy disclosure. It basically tells us that most of the information will be available online. Going to the next step, this is the submitter. So I'm filing the company. So I'd be putting my information. I'm just going to leave it blank, but uh, whoever is filing will put his or her information here. The corporation name, it's asking whether we reserve the name. Um, let's say we have not. Now, when you put the name, um, so uh, obviously it has to be unique with the state of California. And also um, the system will run, run an initial check against any name they have in a database, but be mindful um, of the name. Uh, if it has any um, derogatory, defamatory terms, or it has any political slogans in it, the state has a right after the initial approval of the name to reject it. So just be mindful how you're naming your business. So um, business address. So this is the principal address. It, it, it's basically your office. If you're working from home, you can use your home address. But again, it's going to be public. A uh, mailing address, which may be a PO box. May, many business owners will just get a PO box and use it there who, who do not have an office. Uh, directors. Now, uh, you 
may or may not, uh, you may choose to name directors. So uh, if you say yes, you click add and you just put the director's information. Um, director is someone who makes decisions for the company, right? So, um, and you can always amend it later. You can always edit later if you want to. Uh, we generally recommend, especially if it's a small uh, one person owned company, if it's a startup, just name yourself as the director of the company. Um, now, registered agent, this is what we're talking about. You can name yourself as your registered agent if you are in California and you are willing to be open during reasonable business hours. Otherwise, you can just hire someone to be a registered agent. Keep in mind, you will have to um, have an agreement with a registered agent to serve for you before putting the information here. So uh, you will basically type their name, you will click on search, and if, if that's that's a valid registered agent registered in the state of California, their name will show up here and you'll be able to use their services um, as long as they've agreed to, um, to serve for you. Now, um, total number of shares you're issuing. So um, this is basically um, something you have to decide beforehand. You can always authorize additional shares. So this is not, I'm sorry, I apologize. This is not what you're issuing. This is what you're authorizing. So we, this is what you potentially can issue, right? So um, small companies would usually start with 100 shares. California, generally speaking, does not tax you based on the number of shares. So um, there aren't too many limits here, but um, again, better to um, consult with someone or decide beforehand how many shares you want. Uh, here you can also choose different classes of shares like um, if you want to. Um, now there's a general purpose statement that your corporation um, is built to engage in, uh, in lawful activity. Uh, and then here you, the filing date is current date most common in some cases if you want your corporation to be available in the future. Uh, for example, if it's like December, you don't want to file a tax return for uh, just for one month, um, you just put a future day of January 1st and uh, you don't worry about anything uh, for that specific year, right? Um, attachments, you don't have to attach anything. You may if you want to. Most companies will not. Review and signature. Um, obviously, we haven't put any information, but normally all this information would be filled in. Um, so... After that, uh, we uh, will basically add a signature here. And then um, we pay the processing fee, which is $100. Uh, you may get a certified copy for extra $5. Um, sure, it's only $5. Unlike Delaware, the charge is 50. Um, I would just add that option too. Standard processing usually takes about a week. Um, that's It's not that bad, but if you want same day service, you can pay extra $750 and uh, your company, if you filed everything correctly, will be ready the same day. Uh, same day means um, basically a working time, right? So, okay. And then after you're, you've chosen, you will make the payment. And then here you will see a screen um, summarizing everything. You'll click submit. And you, once you submit it, you can go to your My Work queue and um, it will show uh, the status of the company. It will say processing, not the pending or not approved yet. And then you can just check it daily, just give it a couple of days, and after that, check it. And if there are any, uh, uh, if anything was wrong with your filing, the state will have notes about it. Will they will they'll, they'll just ask you to correct it and uh, send it back, or they'll just approve it, or they may just in some cases they may just decline it. So that's all. Once you do it, and by the way, you can save the draft if, let's say, um, you. Um, filled out most of it and you're just missing a couple of uh, key points so you don't have to start over you can save it and come back the next day right so that's pretty much it and for all intents and purposes you'll have a duly registered uh, california corporation sounds exciting so uh once they get a, a response from uh, uh from the state that the, the company has been filed and uh, uh, so uh, what are the next steps? What do they get? They get only articles of incorporation. Do they get something else? And what are the next steps? Uh, they typically typically get their articles of incorporation along with the receipt of filing. 
So after that, um, I would say the bare minimum requirement would be to get an EIN number, right? So they can open a, a business account with the bank and they can also file their taxes. Now, additional requirements uh, strongly recommended to get um, some internal regulations such as issuing stock, such as writing corporate bylaws, such as um, uh, appointing board of directors, right? Appointing um, officers. Uh, just uh, just for the distinction, officers are people who run day-to-day uh, -day operations of the business. Directors are people who make important decisions, right? So with small companies, that's probably always the same person. When the company grows, it has a more uh, complex uh, management structure. And if you want to have some checks on, on the CEO's power, you will usually appoint someone else on board, right? Um, and then once you have the EIN number, once you have the internal regulations of the company, once you have the bank account, uh, you want to check whether your activity requires licensing and is subject to sales tax. So uh, luckily, uh, and I know most of your viewers are software developers, um, so they... Uh, Software development generally typically doesn't require additional licensing and software is generally generally is not subject to uh, sales tax in California. So you can start operating your business. But if you're opening an ice cream shop, uh, you will need to obtain uh, certain licenses. And um, the absurdity in California is that every city and every county may uh, require additional license from you. So uh, if you have a shop in, um, in the city of Belmont, uh, which is in County of San Mateo, which is in the state of California. So Belmont may, may have one requirement for your licensing. San Mateo County may have second requirement and the state of California may have another. So um, that's a pretty complex process, but um, again, uh, not every business has to do it. So, so I was saying, yeah, once you've obtained the license or you have, you've been made sure um, you don't have a licensing requirement, uh, you can just start your operations. Okay, so you mean that uh, the county, not only the state, also have uh, some uh, regulation uh, and uh, in every county there are some number of cities and this is extra regulation where you might require to get some licenses and you have to pay for these licenses based on some local requirements such as your income, for example. That's correct, yes. Yeah. So that's, that's correct. But again, luckily, uh, service-based industries, uh, consulting, stuff like that typically does not require city licensing. And uh, things like software development, which is a risk-free industry, doesn't require, typically speaking, there may always be exceptions, but generally speaking, you don't have to get a license to um, just uh, develop software. Yeah, just check with your uh, uh, state and with your county, just to make sure that you're compliant with everyone. But uh, with that, before I say something else, guys, please press the like button because this video saves you a lot of money, a lot of time. And this is the exactly the process, how you want to register your company. And we try to answer you the most common questions that you might have before you start opening your company. So again, press the like button comments below and uh, if you have any questions we'll be happy to answer all those questions so um and uh, please share this video with uh, the community with other entrepreneurs to help them because google world exists where founders help founders help us entrepreneurs we are sharing this knowledge so you can save some money starting your company we ho i hope we shared as much as uh, needed for you to start a business but also keep in mind this is not a legal advice we are not lawyers we are trying to help as with all public steps that's available on the internet, so you can do it yourself. Uh, and if you need uh, a tax advisor help or legal advice uh, at Google World, we have licensed advisors, uh, tax advisors and lawyers. We can help you with that, so you also can get extra support. Now, with that said, thank you so much, Tigran. Uh, we look forward to we'll have more videos with you and you guys. We'll stay tuned as there are some extra videos going to follow after this one. Take care. Thank you. Too. Thank you.